uh, Lee Hogan here, VIP Boxing, down at uh, Headlands in Har Hartlepool, where I'm going to talk to uh, VIP's latest signing, and, and arguably probably <coughs> biggest signing, uh, a, a genuine amateur superstar, a girl who's won... Well, what haven't you won? Well, yeah, I've won five national titles, um, a couple of GB titles, four European gold medals, a European silver medal, a youth world title, and then the Commonwealth Games silver medalist in 2022. And were you the first, or did you and, was it um, oh, the girl you mentioned? Uh, me and Caroline. Caroline, so, yeah. yeah we were the first youth world champions for the girls ever. So it was like a bit of a record breaking thing as well, that one, which was <laughs> nice to share. Yeah, uh, I, I said, when, when, in fact, uh, uh, my boss and your manager, Steve Wood, has uh, got your old medical card. I think we must, must get everything set up. Yeah. And we looked on it and there's, I think, 45 fights listed on it. Yeah. There's 44 wins. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's my old medical book. So that <laughs> was when I was like, just, I think that was when I was with England, obviously, then I went on to GB and I had plenty more. But I think I'd give him the other day, like, he was like, I need your medical books. So I just got all of them and I was like, here's free medical books because mm -hmm. I've had so many fights like internationally and like obviously with my club as well. So it was quite a good record well, I've accumulated. Before you start winning all these, let's find out about yeah. you. How, how did you start boxing? Um, so I've been in the boxing gym since I was six. My dad was a kickboxer in his younger days, but he wasn't dedicated enough for it. So he never competed, but he enjoyed it and he learned and he also coached it. So then he took my brother when he was about 10 to kickboxing and I was just a little girl again there just watching my brother and then I started joining and they let me join in with the classes and we got our yellow belt so my brother just wasn't very good at it, he couldn't do the kicking and my dad was like this isn't the right sport for you but he enjoyed the punching side of it so he transitioned my brother into boxing and again I was so young I just used to run around, my dad opened his own gym in the end and my brother was really just a guinea pig because my dad never coached boxing before. So he, my brother was like a guinea pig, he got all these other boxes as well. And then I just kind of was always there, so I picked it up naturally without even doing it. I was around the lads all the time, I was listening, I was there every night after school, I wasn't in the park. And then he was like, right Gem, I want you to start just for fitness, this was about eight years old. So at eight years old I took it more serious, I started training, naturally doing it myself. And then at 10 I sat my, down, I sat my dad down and I was like, Dad, I want to compete, I want to be like my brother. And at the time he didn't want me to compete. He was like, it's going to be a lot harder if you compete. You're not just going to come and turn up to sessions. He was like, I need you to be more dedicated. So he was like, it's up to you. And I said, no, I want to do it. I want to be just like my brother. I was seeing him winning and everyone excited for him how happy he was. And I was like, I want to do just that. And then from 10 years old, I started competing and I just never looked back. <laughs> well, uh, Gino, you're talking about your brother there. I think I'm going to have to check because I filmed uh, the National Youth Championships in 2014. Yeah. It was held at Walton. Salford, I think they say, but, you know, Manchester anyway. But I, I filmed them, and uh, it was a quality lineup in there. I, if you look at all the names of the kids that were won, that yeah. won those championships or were in the finals, yeah. I've all gone on. Ben Whitaker was yeah. in there. Zach Chelly. Yeah. Now Zach Chelly, if I'm right, because I've got his name down on there, yeah. didn't realise the kid he fought and beat in the final was your brother yeah it was yeah so like, James won it in 2013 and then the year after he got to the final and obviously boxed that Shelley so like, he boxed for England as well my brother and like boxed ah. some top lads and then because in them on. days the youth wasn't split you have the youth cadets yeah and have, yeah there wasn't yeah there was yeah, just one it was just thing one year yeah you had to go in and you could go in at 16 and, and compete all the way up to being 18, 18 before you went into the yeah. elites yeah and that's like so I was there as well and there were some quality lads there at the time there was always Obviously, like I said, Ben Whitaker, all them lot that was well, competing as well. Sonny Edwards was Sonny on there, Andrew yeah. Kane, like you say, Zach Shelley, uh, uh, Nathan Gorman. Yeah. In fact, Nathan Gorman was really funny because he turned up and uh, I, I think he'd left his shorts and he had to grab a pair. <laughs> and he used the, someone else. Yes, yeah, he, and he, he looked like the kid out of uh, uh, Kez in the <laughs> film. Uh, he, he just looked wrong and his belly was hanging over and the guy that he was fighting was... Oh, a fine specimen yeah. of a man, and I'm thinking, whoa, this is a mismatch here. Yeah. This is this is going to yeah. be. Oh, this is going. I was totally wrong because uh, uh, Nathan Goldman absolutely. I think yeah. he stopped the kid in the second round. Yeah. So it was. Uh, yeah, Good yeah. To it was, uh, that 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 night was 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 just full of future stars. Yeah. 
Um, but uh, I don't get a chance to film them too often, but uh, I'm glad I did. On glad that yeah, I got it. But back to you now. Yes. So, <laughs> um, you, you, so you, 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 as soon as you could box, you did box. Yeah, it's all I've ever known since I was And little. obviously you were regular winning all the way through yeah. to, uh, well, when did you hang up your vest, was it? When did you decide to hang up your vest? So my last competition, amateur, was in April. And then after that, um, I still stayed on and I was gonna, I was in two minds whether to turn over or, or not. And then I went to Thailand as a reserve for the Olympics. And after that, I just had like a bit of time off and I thought, what do I want to do? Because at that point, I didn't know if I wanted to turn pro, carry on GB, or at the time, I didn't know if I wanted to quit altogether. And mm -hmm. I was just gonna pack in for good. And it took me a few months to, my head was all over the place. It took me a few months to see what's right and what's, what I want to do and if I still love the sport anymore. But as soon as I stepped away and had some time to myself and got training again, the love was still there and the passion was still there. And I thought it was time for a new journey. So that's when I thought, I sat down with my family and I said, I don't want to be on TV anymore. I'm going to, I think I'm going to leave. And I want to try it now in the professional ranks and see how I do there. And the connection with this gym here is, John Stubbs was one of the England coaches yeah. there, who was a good friend, a little yeah. mentor of yours there. Yeah. So I met John, I think, first I met him in 2016 when I won the GB Free Nations and I've literally got a photo on my Instagram of us with the gold medal because he was one of the um, coaches in my corner. Did he have hair then? <laughs> no, we were still bald. <laughs> I've never known him with hair. I can't say anything, can <laughs> yeah. I? And then from there, like, I had him like, in the Europeans in 2019, he was one of the main coaches. And then just... I didn't really speak to him after that. I went to, I went to GB and like, obviously I knew what, like, we still knew each other. I went, um, he messaged me good luck and all that. And then it was when I was boxing for GB after a fight um, when people used to message me like, well done and that. I used to ask coaches like, what did you think of my performance? Like, what did you think like, what was right and what was wrong? And I used to ask some coaches and some coaches used to just say, everything was really good, like you've won, like you'd box well. And the one thing about John was he told me what I did bad. And he didn't just, just because I won the world championships or I won the Euro, under 22 <laughs> Europeans and everyone was buzzing for me, he didn't like just let that go. He was like, you did this all right, like this could have been better. And from there, I used to go to him quite often. I used to be like, what do you think about this bout? Or I'm fighting this person, what, what's your opinion on this? So I just got like a good bond with him and a good like trust with him because I knew he'd tell me the truth. Like if I was good or if I needed to work on something, I knew it, I could rely on him to tell me that. And then from there, it just, I was like, it makes sense to go with him. And how would you describe your style for anyone who's not watched your box before? Um, so I think this is like two things. If you know me from when I was younger, it would be like relentless, like just, I used to just love a fight. I used to just get in there and I'd be aggressive and I should just go toe to toe and I'd be like all guns blazing. But when I, um, these recently I turned into a bit of a boxer as well on GB. I was very like GB style. I could use my brain, pick my shots like technically better. So I think I'm an aggressive boxer, but I've got a boxing brain as well. So I've got a bit of a mixture of both, which mm -hmm. is quite good, I think. Which is useful, especially for the yeah. pro game. Because yeah. you've now gone from you know, being a, a sport about hitting and not, not being hitting, hit. yeah. uh, into a sport that's about entertainment. Yeah, and, and, of course. And, getting people excited yeah. about you and sometimes you've got to take a risk haven't you yeah and that's i think that's the thing we're getting back to me now like that old a bit of aggression Gemma, who like to get in there and be a bit nasty instead of this tippy tap in and out boxing that i'm used to doing for the past six years and have you any idea when the uh, the journey in the professional ranks are going to start so we're hoping like early next year so like february time will be my debut hopefully when all the medical stuff is cleared and that so and, and is there anything that you have to work on because they are two different sports, even though it's boxing. Yeah. Amateur boxing and professional boxing are two totally different sports. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you're working on? And if so, do you think the, the transition into the pro game will be easy for you? Um, I think, well, every day is a learning day for me. Like, now it's a completely different sport. And I think everyone says, like, obviously, about amateurs being the apprenticeship. And I think I've done a good few years then. I've got a lot of experience under my... Um, under my belt to say years. to yeah <laughs> to go into the pros which is always going to help and I think I've got it good for the sake of that but I think my style is going to change a lot more now which I think I'll pick up quick and but I'm learning every day I'm with Amp and with John I'm still obviously training with my dad back home as well when I'm there 
So I'm just learning new things and just adding new things to it all the time to carry on into the next thing. Now, John also does uh, tenacity boxing yes. and we've got quite a few kids up yeah. here who have signed with us as well. Do you move around with any of those lads? Yeah, so um, obviously like Trav, Adam and all that, I get to train with them like when I'm in Sunderland with uh, the tenacity team. So it's good just being in the gym with them and I think there's talks about I'll be moving around with them or like Bo and all that like. Mm -hmm. I'll be in the ring with them for like tech sparring and stuff like that. I've already done a few rounds with them before, but I've just had my eyes done, so I haven't been getting punched yet. But <laughs> this week, I think I'm going to start getting punched again, so I'll be back with the team and back. Hopefully not too much. <laughs> you know, trying to not get hit by them lads because they're <laughs> quite strong and powerful. <laughs> but but no, no, like you say, I, I, I like this story. And also, the North East is, well, if you look at the, 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 the ladies in your weight yeah. category, a lot of them are based around this yeah, area, they aren't are, they? So yeah. I presume that could be good for you for going yeah, forward for, for sparring with them as well. Exactly, like we've got sparring near us, like with the lads and with the girls. So I'll be active with that and getting those many rounds as I can, and like with different opponents, learning different things, trying new things. And so it's all good prep. Will, will that change for you as well? Because as a, as a female amateur boxer, you're boxing three three minute rounds. Yeah. Now, are you looking forward to just doing the two minute rounds? Because it is a much higher, th I think this yeah. is why female boxing has, has, has rose so fast. Yeah, it's it's like because it's so fast. exciting. Yeah. Because there's no time to, you don't really have time to set things up. No. You've just got to react, go. react, react, yeah. and, and keep on you know, pushing forward. Pushing. Exactly, and I think I'm so used to three minutes. I've been doing three minutes since I was 16 and I'm 23 now. So like going back to the twos, it's a big change. I've been doing some like, rounds where it's two minutes and like the time goes so quick and I'm like getting used to that being like do you know what you haven't got long in, in these two minute rounds like you've got to like be quick with it and like give everything in a two minute round because they just fly past they yeah. do so it's getting used to that it's getting like getting well, my engine it's going. what is made female exactly yeah, so it's entertaining for me. yeah, yeah. So everyone knows that you haven't got long set so they go together and they just go for it don't they so yeah, but anyone who actually has actually done two minutes realise it is a long time. <laughs> it's still a long, time, a long yeah. time, But that extra minute is a killer. Yeah, it is. And that's yes. what I mean, you can't afford to be like, with that extra minute you can be afford to be a bit slower, look at your shots, do this. With that two minutes, it's still as tiring because the pace has been picked up now mm -hmm. even more, so it's just still as hard, like yeah. going, going for it for the full two minutes. So, like you say, is, is that, is, is that, you're looking forward to that side? Yeah, I think I am, like, I think, I am looking forward to the two minutes because my engine, is a good engine so I know I can like push myself for the two minutes but I also did like the three minutes because over the long periods of rounds you can get to people like you can get to people yes, as the rounds yeah. go on and as the I, time goes on. I presume before you end your career female boxing will be up to three minute rounds. Yeah. It will yeah, come. It'll um, come. But it's just not ready for it yet. Yeah. Because exactly. the pool yeah. isn't quite thick. But like I said, I was just looking on the, the amateurs and there's like 25, 30 girls ranked yeah. in the uh, in the amateur boxing yeah. scene. That would have never happened. No, but exactly. You are in the classic weight division. Yeah. You know the one that has it's been made famous one. by Katie <laughs> yeah. Taylor. Of course, you know, it's busy and it's exciting. It is so. Uh, there's lots of people out there at that weight as well. So it'll be an exciting times as well. There's lots of people who have already like made history in the sport and like made that why women's boxing is so good now. Like, likes Katie Taylor, what she's done for the sport. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it's like unbelievable. And, like, I think that that Olympics, the 2012, was the Olympics yeah. that changed yeah. it. I know it was the first time that they were involved yeah. in it, but. What a, what a way to be involved. Yeah, it, obviously I was there before, so I saw the sport like with the not many girls in it and all that. And then after that 2012 Olympics, you could see the change, like girls wanting to come to the boxing gym and like wanting to be like Katie Taylor and like Nicola Adams and all that lot. Like they really changed the sport that first Olympic. Who was your first female boxing hero then? So my first female boxing hero was Stacey Copeland. Oh, still, I know yeah. Stacey. She's brilliant. Stacey, like, um, I remember when I was younger and this was, she came to my boxing club, brought like a belt and she brought me like a world champion, a t-shirt from the world championship she went to and she was like, you can keep this and I'm like, hopefully one day you'll have your own and obviously I brought her like the gold medal in the end that I won like years later. But she just took me under a wing, like I used to go to like Ricky Atten's gym with her, I used to spar yeah, with her, yeah. I used to go to her like old actually amateur club. She took me to Ireland on the training camps, like she really took me under her wing and like, and what she does for women, like women's sport in general, I just find yeah. amazing. So yeah, like, I really look up now. to her. She, she yeah. does a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I loved her story of her and her dad. Yeah. Yeah. Because Eddie, who yeah. does the MC and all, yeah. all the amateur shows, I, I, I see him most weekends. And uh, 
you know, yeah. he, he was Lovely a man. Fa yeah. fantastic boxer yeah. as well. But he, unfortunately, uh, I think he's got a film out. They made a yeah. film about him called One Punch. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. got his uh, eye socket yeah. fractured and uh, it put an end to his career. Yeah. But he was, uh, I think they are still now the only uh, father Baron, and daughter yeah. that have won ABA titles. Yeah. And I think Stacey won three, was it? Uh, yeah, the like that, under actually. tens, under twenties yeah. and the elites. Um, so, I mean, so, from young, like, she, like, if anyone ever asked me, she'll always be my role model. For, like, I know, obviously, the, the likes of Katie Taylor, what they've done for the sport, but for me personally, what she's done for me over the years, I'll never beat that. Like, she's been amazing to me. Yeah, yeah, she's a top girl. Yeah. Like I say, I was fortunate to bump into a lot, and she, I think she went over on a trip with us over to uh, after where she won the Commonwealth, yeah. which was amazing as well. I think it was only a fifth fight. Yeah, she, she stepped did. up from four yeah. rounds to ten rounds, yeah. uh, and, and uh, yeah, she's, she's, she's crazy as well. She, she, she's a character. She, she is, yeah. <laughs> you don't get many people like Stacey. No, no, and, and, and dedicated trainer. Yeah, she was all the lads used to say, you know. She pushes everyone yeah. to the limit. Really, she's in competition with everyone. Even if she's in a room on her own, she's yeah, in she'd, competition. Yeah, she'd find a competition, yeah, yeah, she would. She's <laughs> class. Right, she well, is. listen, I, I'm looking forward to this journey of your starting. Thank you. Uh, we're not sure when, but we hope it's going to be early 2025. Yes, definitely. Um, but no doubt we'll be down here at some point to catch up with you, uh, to find out how yeah. preparations are going for yeah. that start. And uh, good luck with, with the rest of... Thank well, you very You've much. got a long camp now, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, that's it now, yeah. And, and do you know something? I was going to say the first two years, but with ladies boxing, within the first two years, you can be fighting yeah, for world titles. Yeah, it's different. And with your it? background and, and pedig yeah. pedigree as an amateur, uh, it probably will happen. Yeah, then. hopefully get as busy as possible and just get the fights in and get going with it. That's the plan. All right, well, listen, uh, you take care. Thank and we'll you. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Thank Gemma. You. Take care, love. Bye bye. You too. Thank you. For all boxing info, news, and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP Boxing Promotions. Also, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.